Hey, this is Luke with Salt Strong out here with Otis today, and we're gonna see if we can get on to some fish. This is an area in St. Pete, Florida that I've never fished before, so exploring some new territory. We're in between the cold fronts. This is, this is early February. We have uh, just a, a cloudless day with very light winds, which is actually my least favorite, because in these conditions, a lot of times the fish are, are very spooky, and having Otis on board does not help. At least he's being, He's being calm now, but that's gonna quickly end once we hook up. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna target docks. I got on smart fishing spots and, uh, and picked out a few areas that looked really nice. So we're gonna get after them and hopefully we have some fish catching action coming to you soon. We'll see you there. All right, so I stopped at spot number one and, and I stopped the big motor over a hundred yards away from the shoreline, knowing that the fish are gonna be spooky, right? This water's clear. There's not a ripple on the, on the surface at all, no clouds in the sky, so stealth is everything. I, I selected the PowerPron USA because there's no vibration, it looks lifelike, and I basically knew that I just had to target docks. These fish are going to be the, the least spooky when they're comfortable next to the dock pilings. I only had a little over two hours of time to fish, and so I basically had to go as fast as I could while still being able to fish slow. So I was basically just targeting the outside sections of the docks at first, I really wasn't seeing much. So then started pushing up a little bit forward and I got to the very first spot that I marked on far, smart fishing spots and that's exactly where the fish were. Cool, a bunch of snook. All right, well found the fish. Oh, I gotta get them to eat. They're holding shallow, just not aggressive at all yet. Ooh, big snook. Look at that one, he's looking at me. Yeah, so I totally botched that cast. The, the snook was looking right at me, so the odds of it hitting were pretty much pretty much nil. But uh, but anyhow, the, the day was going off to a rough start. This dolphin kept messing with me, so that didn't help. And on this on this calm day, my trolling motor was making some crazy loud noise. So I had a rough start. I was starting to think that this was gonna be a skunk trip, and uh, and so I just kept fishing, obviously, and, and just wanted to show how slow I was fishing. This was the the first catch of the day, and I basically made the cast, let this lure sink all the way to the, down to the bottom. And then I was just slow bouncing along the bottom, and, and that's that's basically the best way to get strikes during these winter periods. And here is the first catch. There we got him. Got something. So we got ourselves a trout. All right, fish on. Easy, Otis. There we are. We got the trout in, and Otis didn't fall out. All right, so I just kept going down the shoreline. I was mainly targeting the docks, but then in between the docks, I did start noticing some fish up in the shallows. So started trying some sight fishing, and uh, these fish were so spooky. It was rare that I was able to get a lure to them before they spooked off of the line. And at this point, I was approaching the second spot that I found on the map, and it looked just as good on the water as it did on the map. All right, textbook little spot here, right in the cove. Imagine there's some fish around this dock. So here is the, the cast of the second catch of the day, and, and same thing, where I would make the cast, I would let it sink down to the bottom, and then a slow retrieve out, just feeling for any thumb. There we are, got him. Oh, oh. Oh, is it around the pie lane? Got him. Nice. Oh, we got a redfish. So here's a little uh, behind the scenes look, where you can see I had to fight uh, basically a, a dog and a fish at the same time. Otis was not behaving very well, so I had to take a little bit of time off while in the middle of the fight to get Otis in line, and then back to the redfish. <laughs> Easy, Otis is pumped. All right, we got ourselves a red. All right, not the biggest red, but at least got one. It had me around that piling, but it slurped down that Power Prawn USA right next to that dock piling. That was cool. All right, let this guy go. Sweet. All right, we're on the board. Got a little bit of fray going on, so we're gonna retie and get back after it. So that ended up being the last catch of the day. I had several other strikes, just couldn't get a good hook set. The good news is I at least caught some fish. I didn't get my slam, but I at least got two of the three that I was targeting. Also the good news is Otis didn't fall in, so that was a huge plus. So I wanna talk about the two lessons, that, the, the two core lessons from this trip, and then we'll talk about the tackle at the end in case you're curious about that. So lesson number one is just the importance of stealth overall stealth when it's glass calm like that and when the water's clear and the skies are clear that is when we just have to be as quiet as possible in those sort of conditions the fish have a huge advantage because they can just feel everything so much better it's like being that in like a forest at night when there's when there's no wind at all and like even a little squirrel uh, stepping on a leaf makes a loud noise so so very important is think about stealth when you're out there on a day like that when it's super calm and clear in sunny skies. And number two is, is about the, just the, the comfort level of fish, right? When, when fish are spooky like this, we need to target areas really tight to structure because those fish were noticeably less spooky 
than the ones up on the up on the open flats, up on the grass flats. Because when they're around those dock pylons, they're just way more secure and, and they're, they're just way less likely to get spooked off. And so there was no coincidence that all of my strikes happened within like two or three feet of a dock piling. And, and every time I did spend a pretty good amount of time trying to get those fish in the open flats and I didn't get a single strike from any of them. And so now for the tackle, we'll talk about the, the rod first. This is most important, rod, rod is the, the most crucial element of the game. And this one, I, I went back to the TFO Pro. I haven't used this in a bit. This is my, my all time, just overall value. This is my favorite rod under the $200 price point. And it's proved to be awesome, right? It's all about just having good castability and good field strikes. This got the job done. This is a 7.6 model. I like their medium power best. And I love it paired with this Daiwa Fuego. This is the Fuego 2500. I absolutely love this reel. It's, the, it's their least expensive model that has their mag seal, which is, uh, which is pretty cool. And this thing has been lasting for a long time. And as far as the line, I have J Braid 8 grand 10 pounds. So that's a little bit light for dock fishing. I had to go down a little bit. I had to go a little bit lighter given the conditions, right? This is not a time where, uh, where like a 30 pound a 30 pound line can, uh, can get strikes. They're, those fish could see everything. And so I had to take a little bit of a risk there. Uh, fortunately, uh, you know, I didn't have any break offs and everything ended up working out. Uh, as far as leader, so I had a 10 pound braid main line. The leader is a 20 pound mono. And I love mono. I especially like mono for dock fishing. Mono is much more abrasion resistant than fluorocarbon. Like that redfish, although it was small, it did have me around a dock piling and that had a lot of, a lot of sharp oysters on it. And, uh, and that mono held, held true where I believe fluoro probably would have given way. So now for lures, if you saw in the video, I was using the bigger power prawn. And, and lately I've been using the junior. And the reason why I went with this bigger one is because I knew this fish, that I knew the action was gonna be up under the docks. And this is better at skipping than the junior. There's just more surface area, there's more mass. And I was able to get further skips under the docks. This is actually, we got all the action. And what I did, I actually have the junior on right now. I actually switched to the junior and then went back to the docks that had the most fish right before I had to leave. And I was just gonna see if they were more likely to hit the smaller lure and, uh, and they did not. So although I still love the junior, when I'm, when I'm skipping on the docks, I'm gonna still stick with this, right? This, uh, this one just skips better and, uh, and even those smaller fish were, uh, were, were not hesitating to go smack it. And the reason why I went with the weighted hook, this is the Haas Helix hook. This is the four-aught for the, the original size and, the, and then the three-aught for the junior. But why I went with this Helix hook is because, again, this is all calm. The, I wanted to have the, the least amount of splash as possible. And this weighted hook has a lighter landing than a jig head. So for that reason, I just went with this and I just had to just give it a little bit more time to get down to the bottom. And, uh, and again, that still at least proved to get, to get uh, two of the three species of the day. So, so that's it for the report. If you need any of, this, any of these items, it's all at fishstrong.com. And in case you're in need of a, of a new combo, this is a special that we have where it's the rod, the reel, and the line at a significant savings. It's been one of our top sellers recently. So if you're in need of a, a setup, this is awesome. This is a good all-purpose inshore saltwater setup. Uh, I cannot recommend it enough, and I'll put a link down below in case you're curious about that. But everything's at fishdrawn.com, and for you Insider Club members, you can get all of this at a 20% savings. So really awesome there. So thank you so much for your time and watching. Any questions at all about this trip, leave a comment down below. Otherwise, hope to see you again soon.